National Nuclear Security Administration is tasked with maintaining the US nuclear stockpile without underground nuclear testing. Uh, as a result of that, uh, supercomputers become a key element of our ability to assess the effectiveness, safety and security of our stockpile uh, Without underground nuclear testing, uh, we integrate a lot of science and technology through large simulations and use that to assess every year whether the stockpile is uh, in good, st a good health. I was actually involved in the uh, early days of uh, ASC. It was an initiative at the time, started in 1996, and the goal was to develop modeling and simulation capability to support a move to no underground nuclear testing. We realized that if we we're going to take care of the stockpile in the coming decades, uh, we needed a better modeling and simulation capability, and we needed to form partnerships with industry, develop new codes, and so we needed an initiative above what we had in place at the time. And so that's how ASC started. It was ASCI, an initiative. One of the transitions, you know, we've always used computers in the, the Stockpile Stewardship Program, even in the days of testing. Without testing, we now have, uh, have to use computers to give us the integrated answer more than we used to rely on experiments in, in Nevada to give us the integrated answer. So the computers are used from designing performance, designing, designing safety features, uh, designing uh, how they will operate within a given uh, delivery system. And so pretty much supercomputers are used through the whole gamut of the design, uh, evaluation and certification of the stockpile. When you think about how a weapon works, most people think something hits the ground and a big boom happens. It turns out what really happens is a lot of different things inside the weapon function in certain orders and certain ways and to get the kind of effect that you want. So you can look at a bomb as actually uh, operating in you know, kind of 10 nanosecond chunks, which is a billionth of a second. So you look and step a weapon through uh, all these little different things that happen in these small time frames till you finally get the effect you want. A common uh, view is that nuclear physics is the key element. There's actually many scientific elements within the Stockpile Stewardship Program. Uh, you need p nuclear physics indeed. You need uh, people who understand hydrodynamics, people who understand high energy density plasma physics, people who understand materials under extreme conditions. And then you also need engineers, people who understand radiation damage in silicon. Uh, so there's a wide gamut of scientific and technical disciplines that go underpin the Stockpile Stewardship Program. We needed supercomputers to help us because there are regimes that we cannot measure experimental, experimentally even with a nuclear test, uh, temp certain temperature and pressure regimes. And so computers help us to explore those regimes and to see what's going on. Uh, it'd be like trying to take the temperature of the inside of the sun, right? You know, so it's, it's a hostile environment. We have always used computers to inform the final decisions on the US stockpile. Uh, back in the days of underground testing, we did major experiments but we had relatively small computers. But those relatively small computers by today's standards were still many of the best in the world at the time. Uh, without doing the underground tests where we have a, an integrated answer to uh, some of the questions we have in the, the effective safety and surety of the systems, we're relying much more heavily on computations to fill in that uh, knowledge. And so without large computing capabilities, both for the heroic calculations and for doing thousands of smaller calculations to inform uh, design choices, uh, safety surety choices, uh, we, we couldn't do our job. When we do stockpile work, it requires people to do it. You can have the people with the experience, and, uh, and we're fortunate to have them today, but in the future they won't be there. But uh, I don't want to leave anybody the impression that computers will provide the answers because they can't. Uh, people uh, provide the answers, the computers are the tools they'll use to do that. In the past, a designer could build a, a design, go out and test it underground, and you know they, they knew whether it went off or not. I, designers who designed things that didn't go off weren't designers for very long. Those that were successful are the ones that, uh, that went forward. 
In the future, you don't have that integrated test anymore. Instead, you have a, a computer that is physics-based, uh, that provides physics-based answers, and we call it predictive capability. That's what we'll use to judge in the future how well these scientists uh, and these designers uh, can do their job. Over the past decade, the uh, ASC program has been able to take advantage of the increasing power uh, that you get from what people call Moore's Law and you know, developing you know, increasingly more sophisticated models uh, that need more and more power. Well, going into the future, uh, the way we get that computing performance is going to change. One of the future things we want to do is as we advance our computer models is to make them more aware of processing and the metallurgy of the material so that we can better work with the production sites as well to figure out how uh, a process could be improved and still guarantee the performance and the safety, surety and effectiveness of the, the system. So, In uh, recent days with supercomputers, uh, folks didn't even didn't know whether parallel supercomputing was going to be something that had a future or not. Uh, that was the original milestone for the ASCII purple machine was to prove that you could do science at the 100 teraflop scale. Uh, the program and NNSA proved that that could work and soon after that machine was up and operating and folks started buying machines and doing uh, work at that scale, uh, you started to hear people talk about computing being the third leg of science. Uh, in the, through the history of science up to this point, you always had experimental and theory were the two legs of science. It turns out going into the future that uh, computing will be another, the third critical leg of science as we uh, become more and more complex in our thinking about how science works.